from Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Kelowna, British Columbia. We are delighted that you are joining us, either locally or from further afield. 2020, with its very strange turn and its challenges, is behind us. Let us hope and pray that 2021 brings us new beginnings, a solution to our COVID-19 crisis, and an opportunity to move on. We can also say Merry Christmas. We are in the 12 days of Christmas, of course, the 25th of December to the 6th of January, the birth of Jesus, Christmas Day, the celebrations, to the Feast of the Epiphany, when the Magi, those mysterious visitors from the East, found their way with a star to the infant Jesus, bringing him gifts and honor. And certainly, I'm sure, perplexing Mary and Joseph as to who this child of theirs might be. Today is the ninth day, so in the ancient carol, the nine ladies dancing, or nine lambs cavorting in the version that we used in our caroling this year, if you got a chance to see our caroling video. And so we are on the downslide of Christmas, moving to Epiphany, the precursor to Lent, and then Easter. How much it is anticipated, and then how quickly it seems to pass. Our thanks go to all of who have been tuning into our services, so you at home and wherever. My thanks to the people here at Christ Lutheran for their continued faithfulness and support, and in particular those behind the camera and in front of the camera who have been reading, who have been singing, playing music, and bringing us all their technical expertise so that we can take our services from here in our church out into the community and into people's homes. Week after week, it's been amazing what we've been able to accomplish from those early days. I'd just like to take a moment to draw attention to our Christmas tree here. You may have noticed uh, perhaps unusual ornaments to you. These are what are called chrismons, or signs of Christ, or names of Christ. And this was something that was developed by a woman called Frances Kipps Spencer from Ascension Lutheran Church in Danville, Virginia in 1957. So this is a fairly new church tradition. It has been adopted by many Lutheran churches and Anglican churches and others. And so Frances felt that for the worship space, she wanted the Christmas tree to reflect our faith and our worshiping of Christ in the season. And so she developed a number of ornaments. So rather than putting the name of Jesus, she was thinking about a birthday cake where you write the person's name on it. This is, of course, Christ's birthday. So she developed symbols that remind us of Christ or that name Christ. So we have the cross, we have a couple of different versions of the Trinity, another we have the Christian fish, the ichthus, as well as of course angels and stars. And the whole is in white and gold and very simple and elegant, um, white and gold being the liturgical colors for Christmas. And so these ones have been made over the years by a number of the women in our congregation and we cherish them and treasure them and enjoy them this year. So I thought I'd make a mention to it because of the fact that you may have been seeing them over the Christmas season. And we're happy that we can share that with you. Our service today is a gift also, once again, from Canadian Lutheran World Relief. They brought us a service about Palestine and about Ethiopia, and they have prepared this Advent Christmas service and appropriately called it Gift of the Magi. And it's brought to us by Carla Blakely, the Director of Community and Donor Relations, her niece Rachel Toth, Akilulu Huke, Director of Programs for Canadian Lutheran World Relief, and the Inshallah Multi-Faith Choir from Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, whom you may have already enjoyed in previous versions. CLWR is our own unique Canadian Lutheran creation. It's a non-governmental organization, or NGO as it's known, and it was started in 1947 by Canadian Lutherans, many of whom were recent refugees from war-torn Europe. And they were concerned about the conditions there, and so they began to collect money and uh, shipments of food and aid that went to Europe. And from those early beginnings, CLWR has expanded into a worldwide organization basically funded by 300,000 Canadian Lutherans. We're not a big church here in Canada, and it's amazing what they can do in aid and development. And if you have time, you might want to go to their website, clwr.org, and learn more about this amazing group. They work together in partnership with Canadian Food Grains Bank, with the Lutheran World Services of the Lutheran World Federation, 
and many of their projects have got, received matching grants from the Canadian government. So altogether, they do quite a lot of significant work, mostly abroad, and then a few projects here in Canada. It is amazing what this small but mighty organization can do. So come and learn more through our service. Come and be edified on this second Sunday of Christmas as we bid farewell to Christmas and look with hope and expectation as the Magi did following the star, we follow the star to Christ and to where Christ will lead us in this coming year. Thank you once again. Hi, my name is Pastor Carla Blakely and I'm the Director of Community and Donor Relations with Canadian Lutheran World Relief. I hope you're doing well. What a difficult time we find ourselves right now with this global pandemic. My heart and my prayer reaches out to all of Canadian Lutheran World Relief donors and pastors, congregations and um, communities uh, of focus. In one of my one of my favorite hymns that you're going to hear in the service of the word video today is the canticle of the turning where mary praises god and yet calls down systems of oppression and works for justice in the canticle of the turning she reminds us that the world is about to turn that dawn is coming it's a hope we all hang on to that the world is about to turn that dawn of a new beginning is coming where people won't live without access to water, to health, to education, and to food. When you give a gift from the heart, like this chicken, it not only gives people self-reliance, it gives them a gift of hope. In the video that you're about to watch, you will hear from the program director from Canadian Lutheran World Relief, my colleague, Akila Luhunga, who talks about his time uh, growing up in Kenya and reflects on the gifts of the Magi. You'll also hear, once again, powerful music from Inshallah, and you'll hear more about the stories behind the gifts from the heart. Please enjoy. Hi. My name's Debbie Lou Ludolf, and I'm the director of Inshallah at Martin Luther University College in Waterloo. The Canticle of the Turning is a paraphrase of Mary's prophetic song that you'll find in Luke chapter 1. And we sing a version written to an Irish tune. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn, wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, and also with you. Dios de amor y esperanza, durante esta temporada de Adviento, hacemos una pausa y reflexionamos. Sabemos que incluso en tiempos difíciles, en tiempos de pandemia global, en los momentos en los que tenemos miedo, cuando nuestros seres queridos han muerto o están enfermos, trae esperanza al mundo. Una esperanza que llena nuestros corazones, una esperanza que nos envuelve en el amor, una esperanza que nos inspira a ser generosos con tu amor. Una esperanza que nos impide a ser generosos con paz en nuestros corazones, que alienta nuestras reuniones virtuales en esta temporada donde sea que estén en el mundo. Inspiramos a la acción, inspiranos a tender la mano con justicia y amor, descubrir sistemas de opresión, aliviar la inseguridad alimentaria, desafiar la injusticia racial para que todos puedan vivir en esperanza, paz, paz, libertad y amor. Que así sea, en el nombre de Jesús, oramos. Amén. The Gospel is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have served his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it's been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, and from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they heard the king, they set out and out there. Ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Word of God. We are living in an unprecedented times. And Christmas will look different for many people around the world this year. Yet the spirit of this season remains. Spreading joy, sharing love, cultivating hope and celebrating our greatest gift, Jesus. Those of you who are parents would agree with me that there's nothing quite like the excitement of a child opening a present on a Christmas morning. But for many people around the world, receiving a Christmas gift is simply not a possibility because of the realities of poverty. One of the memories of my childhood growing up in Northern Kenya was helping my mother push an empty wheelbarrow to a local community center where we had gone to receive a gift of food. You see, we lived in a community that faced cyclical drought and chronic food insecurity. And that gift meant that my family and my community would be able to get, have nutritious food for the remainder of the lean season. Today, the world faces a greater challenge than any before, as the COVID-19 pandemic threatens to undo many years of progress in poverty education, while exacerbating the pre-existing inequalities and exposing the fragility of our systems. Here is the reality. It is, this year alone, it is estimated that between 100 million people, 
to 115 million people would be plunged into extreme poverty because of COVID-19. The effects of the lockdowns, the job losses, economic disruptions have disproportionately affected extremely poor and marginalized communities. And so for the millions of people who depend on working the informal economy, it means that they have no income and any little saving that they had has already dried up. But here is even a greater reality. Love is rising to meet that challenge. I often look back and reflect on the gift that is the center of this holiday. It is easy to think about Christmas as a time that is primarily about giving and receiving gifts. But when I think about Christmas, I think about hope. When I consider the incredible gift of Jesus and the gifts of hope, of healing, of grace, of mercy, of forgiveness that he brought to the earth, it inspires me to, this, to, to view this season as a time I can be used to be part of God's narrative of hope and redemption. It's clear throughout the biblical narrative that generosity is close to the heart of God. In the Christmas story we read, we have the Magi who come to visit Jesus. They come to him with gifts of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. I'm a curious person, so one of the first thoughts was, why those gifts? I remember reading this passage as a young child, young, young adult, and thinking to myself that these are rather random and useless gifts to give to an infant. As an adult, I realize now that there's significance in each of those gifts based on the culture of the day. And as I read the commentary about this passage found in Matthew chapter 2, the authors state that it's likely that when Jesus, when, when, when Joseph, Mary, and Jesus fled to Egypt, the Magi's gift of gold helped to sustain them financially throughout that period. The generosity of the Magi was one part of God's story of redemption and hope for the world. And they probably never thought about the impact of that one act of generosity. And so as we come to this Christmas season this year, you and I want to give gifts that are intentional, meaningful, and have potential to bring joy to the people who receive it. As families and communities face unprecedented crisis because of the COVID-19 pandemic, your gift can do more than can do more to be able to meet a practical need. As the director of programs at Canadian Lutheran World Relief, I get to see firsthand how the different gifts in our Gifts of Heart catalog impact the lives of thousands of people. I've seen the gifts of sharing life-saving food in an emergency. I've seen how the generosity of ordinary people provided clean water and fresh food in a place where food can scarcely grow. I've seen how mothers not only have had the opportunity for food for their families, but also saw hope. These are all beautiful examples of, how, of people of God coming together to be part of God's narrative of hope and redemption. What if we saw this season as a time when we get to be generous with our lives? bringing hope to others in a tangible way? What if we decided to engage in acts of generosity this Christmas season, even if they seem to be small and insignificant? The reality is this, we have the ultimate gift and the opportunity to share the message of hope, of renewal and restoration that Jesus brings with our words, but also with our actions. We get to give gifts, gifts that will help us help settle refugees here in Canada, providing a caring community and home. We get to give gifts of gods whose milk will nourish children of a widow, or emergency food to people who have fled their homes in the middle of the night to escape horrific violence. We do all this with the goal of being the hands and feet of Jesus, obeying what he says in 1 John 3, 18, to love others around the world with actions and in truth. That is our invitation to be part of God's narrative of hope and redemption. Amen. So Rachel, you know Auntie works for Canadian Lutheran World Relief, and this is our gift catalog this year. So what I thought we could do is if you were to pick out a gift for your mom and dad, what would you pick? Should we look at a few? So emergency food. So 
Canadian Lutheran World Relief works all around the world in situations where people have had to run away because of war or natural disaster or violence. And so when they have to set up in a new place, sometimes they need food. Um, drinking water is so important. Like you and I have water, but some people don't have access to water. So we can buy drinking water, a well. Uh, we can buy hand sanitation, a hand washing station, because sometimes they don't have access to that, or build a latrine, because toilets are important. A pair of goats. Do you think your dad would like a pair of goats? <laughs> um, microclimate insurance that's an important one that's a new gift that we have that's very important um, for farmers um, if they need insurance against the weather that's an important gift um, providing a safe birth for babies that's important oh what about chickens a flock of chickens I was out the other day with some chickens and I, I got to hold one have you ever held a chicken? No. I got to hold a little chicken and talk to it, and it was very nice. And uh, But then it flew away on me. But it was super fun. Maybe you'll have to come sometime and see these chickens. And the roosters. They were making so much noise. Mm -hmm. So if you had to choose a gift for your mom and dad, what would it be for Christmas? One of these. What do you think? A blanket. Blanket? Oh, that's a great idea. The blankets are back here. That's a great idea. And they have to share the blanket then? <laughs> okay, what about for Grandma Gail? Um, I don't know. Maybe... I think we should get Grandma Gail a pair of, a pair of goats. <laughs> no? I don't know. <laughs> See, we actually don't give Grandma Gail a pair of goats. We say we bought her a pair of goats. And then over in one of the countries where we work, they actually get the goats. But Grandma Gail gets the card saying, thank you that you bought people um, in Africa or the Middle East goats. And over there, it's when they have a situation of a life and they need a livelihood, they might say, hey, I would like to start with some goats. Okay. What I want to talk to you about is tiny hearts. This is just for young people like you. And what you can do is you get this whole sheet and now, you see here's the, a chicken is $5, a bee is $5, a tree is $5, a seed is $5, a water jug is eight, garden tools, and a goat. So these are stickers. So you get to pick what you wanna do and put it on here. So Sunday schools can buy, uh, order one of these Tiny Heart stickers. Grandparents can order this for their children. And grandchildren can, would you like to do some stickers? Sure. So you can put the seeds on here, bees, and the whole garden is $75. So if grandparents order this for their children, or their grandchildren, the grandchildren get to play with the stickers, and then the grandparents can pay $75, and that goes towards livelihoods uh, programming, or all of the program that CLWR does. Oh, good job. Those are trees. Trees are so important, especially if you're in an area that doesn't have trees. Trees give shade, trees give fruit. So this is how we teach children about compassion in the world and explain about, uh, you know, systems in the world that aren't as good as they are in Canada. And sometimes when people have to flee difficult situations, that um, children can start learning about compassion, about giving, about why generosity and helping others out is so important. A goat. Perfect. If you haven't received your Gifts from the Heart catalog, be sure to call our office or go online, order your Gifts from the Heart catalog, or actually all of this is online. And this year, due to the pandemic and us having a very uh, limited staff in the office due to COVID closures, we'd be really happy if you could use this online. But feel free to order these. We can mail these out, your Tiny Hearts um, posters and stickers, and have fun teaching children about philanthropy and generosity in the world. Let us pray. God of love, be with us this Advent journey. Calm our hearts. Still our fears as we live within a global pandemic. 
Everything feels different. Churches are closed, families are separated, some are sick, some have died. Comfort those who experience depression, addiction, all who are alone and frayed. Remind us that your love is steadfast. O oh God of hope, give us your peace. Oh, yeah. God of hope, be with us in, this, in our Advent journey. Let us find a new op uh, 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 yeah. opportunities to connect. In, um, inspire us to be people outside the boundaries of church walls. Give us hearts of compassion. Remind us that your hope is steadfast. O oh God of hope, give us your peace. God of peace, be with us this Advent journey. Like Mary who raised her voice in praise, raise our voices. Like Mary who called on hope to challenge situations of oppression, raise our voices against oppressive systems. Open our eyes to injustice in the world. Stir our hearts to action. Remind us that your peace is steadfast. O oh God of hope, give us peace. Want to do another one? Um, sure. God of creation, be with us on, in our Advent journey. Water gives life. Water is life. Water is necessary for life. Open pathways so all people have access to life's sustaining water. Remove systems that block access to food, to health, to education, to sustainable livelihoods, to ensure the well-being of all your children. Open your ears to hear the groaning of Mother Earth and to work for sustainable solutions. Remind us your creation is as steadfast. O oh God of hope, give us your peace. God of the journey, be with us on our Advent journey. Be with so many who journey, especially those whose journey is to flee violence, drought, food insecurity, and natural disasters. Walk with all, protect them, O oh God, Give them shelter as your son was given shelter. Wrap them in protection as mother's arms. Bring them to wise counsel, a star to guide them, and safety from those who would bring harm to them. Remind us that you are steadfast as you journey with us. O oh God of hope, give us your peace. Your turn. God of light, be with us on our Advent journey. Shine the light on the path of those who work for justice in the world, for, for, for the work of CLR or CLWR, our partners, Lutheran World Federation, for every field office worker around the world. Shine light on the front line, health workers and all essential workers. Inspire world leaders to lead with compassion. Remind us um, of your steadfast light. O oh God of hope, give us your peace. Christ child, be with us on our Advent journey from the stable and beyond. In this season of expectation, we prepare for your birth. We prepare for love being born into our world and into our hearts. Remind us of your steadfast love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Rob Wilson. I'm a member of Inshallah at Martin Luther University College in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. The song, There Is No Child So Small, is a gift from New Zealand and it's often referred to as the carol of the least child. The music is by Colin Gibson and the lyrics are by Shirley Erna Murray. The lyrics help us think of children around the world, children experiencing poverty, brokenness, and oppression. 
song helps us as a choir sing towards act of peacemaking and justice doing and as a true call of response to the Christmas story, the carol of the least child. There is no child so small, no scrap of life so precious, that is not born like Jesus, whose cry is like a soul, whose cry is like a soul. There is no child unfed, left hungry now or ever. Thank you for purchasing a gift from Canadian Lutheran World Relief Gifts from the Heart Christmas Catalog. When you purchase a gift like these chickens or goats or garden tools or access to clean water, you're providing great hope for people in the world. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your partnership with Canadian Lutheran World Relief as we serve to make the world a better place. Many blessings this Christmas, this Advent season.